that's why we're here. Um, my, one of my first mentors. Um, Larry Whiteside, for those of you who don't know, uh, was a sports writer from Chicago, which makes me particularly proud, because that's where I'm from. Uh, Larry covered mostly baseball, but he covered everything. A lot of basketball, but he covered mostly baseball. And his reputation was made for covering baseball in Boston, the Globe. Um, and Larry, for those of us, there's a, there's a select group of people in this room now. Stephanie talked about dating us. I'm going to date some people in the room now. It's fun for me to look around and see. One of my first mentors is here, Ron Thomas. Um, and, and there is a, a, a select group, and I'm going to forget some people, but as I look around the room and have seen already Ray Richardson and Rob Parker and Jerry Bembry and David and Gary Howard and Neil and I guess Jay is here somewhere. Um, for, for those of you who, who I have no idea what I'm about to talk about. This is incredibly important. One of my pet peeves, and I have more peeves than things that make me happy as I become old. <laughs> uh, but one of the greatest ones is we don't know our history. And one of the things I refuse to accept from family members or staffers or young journalists particularly is, well, that happened before I was in the business. That happened before I was born. Not good enough. I mean, there's more information at your fingertips than ever. It's more accessible than ever. If you don't know who Larry Whiteside was, I'm going to tell you a little bit, but you need to know who he was and who he is to some of us. And I, I do mean is, even though he's been gone now nine years. Um, Larry kept a, a list in his pocket, and it was called the Black List. And this is long before NBC thought of having that as a name of a primetime show. Um, and so in 1980, actually the summer of 79, when I was in a press box in Chicago on my first assignment, 21 years old, a guy walks up to me. I had not met, to my knowledge, any black sports writers at that point in my career. Um, and Ray Richardson might have been in that same press box with me. And a guy walks up, the White Sox were playing, uh, I guess, the, the Red Sox. And he says, um, who the hell are you? I'm Larry Whiteside. And I introduce myself nervously, and Larry comes out of his jacket pocket. At a time, yes, when sports writers wore jackets every day mm -hmm. to work. And he comes out of his pocket with this list. And he literally took a pen out and started to write my name down, and I told him who I was. And I think I was 36 or 37. Ray, Ray do you know what number you were, you were on the list? 28. 28, okay, so that means Ray a little older than me. <laughs> um, and so Larry literally wrote my name down and said you are, and he would tell you what number you are. Right, David? He, this went on, okay? So in 1980, it's not like the 1950s, in 1980, he was 28, I was 36, Ron couldn't have been more than like 20, 20, were you in the 20s? Teens. Teens. <laughs> Teens. So you, you, you are literally looking at the history of, of, of African American sports writers in this room. Now, the, the entire history, pretty much, I mean, Sam Lacey was the papa of this, and please Google Sam Lacey. Um, but, but, but that's what this was. So Larry would say, you are number whatever, and keeping in contact meant doing it in person. The first mentor breakfast I remember could have taken place in my kitchen. We needed maybe a second table two years later. That's, that's what this is. Um, that's where this started. It's the genesis is the birth of it. And it is unbelievably important to those of us who were there at the start of it. And so Larry took his time, not just to keep that list, but to check in on all of us. And in short time, there were other people, names you should know. Find out about them, like David Dupree, who worked at the Washington Post and mentored many of us. Um, like Ralph Wiley, who I, I can't even imagine a career without Ralph Wiley. Can't, and it's been, what, 12 years now that Ralph's been gone, 2004, is that possible? So, so, so these are the people who make everything go, still, through their legacies, through us. And so Larry dedicated his life not just to the art of sports writing and storytelling, but to, to mentoring, to making sure people had opportunities, to making sure he knew who everybody was. 
And the greatness of this room is, I don't know where everybody is. That's good. Because for too many years, the people I mentioned, we were the only ones in the room, and we knew everybody. That was the extent of this business, and our involvement, our participation in it. Um, and so now, everywhere I go, there are um, producers, and editors, and directors, and reporters, uh, investigative, and columnists, and there are people that I can't possibly keep up with, and that, that, that is the legacy of Larry Whiteside. And so again, get to know him, you can read his work, you can go back, it's easy to find in the Boston Globe, you can, you can find people to talk about him. It's not necessary for athletes to know about him, it's not necessary for, uh, uh, he's not a celebrity, <clears throat> you know, you're not gonna find him, you know, his name popping up in all kinds of places. It's incumbent on us, people aspiring to be in this industry and people in it, to know and appreciate Larry Whiteside. And um, I'm just gonna mention, you know, Mentoring, I, I, I did. I told Stephanie this, when, and she looked at me like I was crazy years ago. And I said, "In five years, you're going to be doing. You're going to be taking these phone calls. You're going to be that person. You're going to be mentoring." She's the easiest person in the world to mentor. Stephanie was, and I don't even think of it that anymore, that way anymore. We are friends and colleagues of many years, and and I can't think of a better in this a better mentor in this room than this woman in terms of everything, commitment, dedication, the ability to reach out, the ability to, to stay on top of, of, of young, talented people who need that direction. We all needed it. Like I said, I, I can't imagine my career without Ralph Wiley, and, and specifically. Um, I'll, I'll go into one paragraph about Ralph Wiley and sit down. Ralph, for those of you who need to know, again, this is my old man history lesson for the day. Mm -hmm. um, Ralph Wiley worked for a number of entities, most famously Sports Illustrated, but a number. He was a columnist, a reporter, uh, an agitator, an author, a best-selling author, uh, provocateur. Larry was everything. I'm, I'm sorry, Larry. Larry was everything, too, but Ralph was everything. And when I first started writing a column for the Washington Post uh, in the late 80s, I would be writing on Saturday. That was a place, that was a good place to sort of practice. You know, not being the Sunday paper, not being the Monday paper, the Saturday paper. Fewer readers, less pressure. And back in the days of tape on answering machines, I would get these Saturday morning phone calls. And it would just be Ralph Wiley, he would just call and start critiquing my column that had appeared. And he would rip the hell out of it. I mean, he, it was like red ink would just bleed all over the phone message. <laughs> and I remember thinking, who, who is this dude? This is so unsolicited. I did not call around Wiley to ask him to critique my column that Saturday morning. And after three or four of these, and there was no, apo there was no apology. <laughs> there was no introduction to it. It's like, yo, man, I mean, I like this. You could have been stronger here. I know you didn't talk to anybody about that. And it's like, whoa, where is this cat coming from? Well, after about three or four of these Saturday morning rants, which probably went on about eight minutes and took up my tape, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't do without them. I could not do without them. I mean, they were necessary. This was Ralph not sitting down where he had to pull punches. He needed to be stern. There were three or four of us writing columns in the entire country. This could not be messed up. And Ralph understood that, it was mentoring. And so, you know, and Ralph would say to me in three to five years, you're gonna be doing this. You're gonna pick up the phone, and you need to call somebody and tell them everything about their work that day and be honest and frank and tough. And so that's what we're here for, uh, to carry on the work of those people and others may be less celebrated, but they're important to me, and I know they're important to the people that I mentioned earlier in this room. And with that, I've stayed up here way too long. Uh, but keep in mind, as we do this, Larry Whiteside, Ralph Wiley, uh, the people who came before all of us and who made this room a lot larger and fuller than we ever thought possible. Thank you. Thank you.